Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hey. Hey. Nice hey. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Do you need a phone? Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Please save the river, Mr. Nelson. Tell Kenny, say save the river. Save the river. All right. Save the manatee. Save the manatee. <laughs> we have a problem in the Indian River all the way from the Kennedy Space Center all the way south to Hope Sea. Uh, we've had dolphin, manatee, uh, pelican deaths, particularly in the north part of the river, up around the Space Center. Uh, obviously here you have a polluted river. It's polluted from a multiplicity of things which we are going to explore today. Uh, storm rot water runoff coming from uh, homes, but also the agricultural community that uh, dumps into all of the storm water that drains into the St. Lucie. Uh, you now have all of that exacerbated with the discharges out of the lake because as the lake gets real high, it starts to threaten the dike. They have to release the water to release the pressure. And you get all that additional polluted water. You get a combination of all of these things during high rainfall, and what you have is a toxic brew in the Indian River and the St. Lucie estuaries. And what I saw was a river that had no life. There were no mullet jumping, uh, there were no seagulls, there were no pelicans diving, there was no osprey, uh, all of it was not a functioning river. So we've got this meeting to explore what we can do. We know we've got to continue the Everglades restoration project, which affects waters like this that dump to the east in the St. Lucie and dump to the west in the Calusa Hatch, and the combination of all these things that man started tinkering with Mother Nature, and you're seeing a lot of the results of it, and we got to clean it up now. Senator, the governor has said that this is a federal issue and not a state issue. In fact, he has so far refused an invitation from Congressman Murphy to come up and meet. Do you believe this is a federal state issue, a Democrat-Republican issue? Uh, the entire Everglades is not only a Florida issue, uh, it is a United States, it's a planet Earth issue. And we better get about it. Now, the entire Everglades restoration project, of which uh, part of it will affect the St. Lucie River, uh, is 50-50. 50 state 50 federal. It's been that way for over two decades. 50 years. And uh, good Lord willing, uh, we will continue the progress that we've made. Senator, well, we got a long way to go. Senator Nelson, a lot of attention is paid to the St. Lucie River. We're here with NBC2 from Lee County, from where the Hatchie dumps out. Our beaches are turning black down there. Sea life is dying. People want action. What's your message to them? Well, the message is that it helps on the way. Uh, but it's going to have to have all the parties working together. Uh, you will hear me uh, comment. I flew over uh, this big new uh, proposed reservoir. They're building the canal right now. That's $33 million. They need another $270 million to build the reservoir and uh, another $60 million to build uh, a water recharge area that is 9,000 acres. We have the land, we've got to build it now. How are we gonna That's uh, one half federal and it's one half state. that you are so that it's faintly familiar to Gatorade. But if you look in the bottom, uh, you'll see a lot of the sediment. And uh, it 
brings back the memories of uh, years ago when with the commission I went in a boat out there and I took two big Gatorade bottles and I scooped them down and I took them back. I had to have them shipped because I couldn't put them on the airplane. And uh, I took one of those bottles with me onto the floor of the Senate when we were then passing the Water Resources Development Act back then. That was close to five or six years ago. And we are allowed in the chamber of the Senate to have a glass of clear water. And I held up the glass of clear water and the big bottle of Gatorade, which was a visual stark contrast to the two uh, about what is happening to this river that we all love and the river that I grew up on as a child and of which I still have some of my old family homestead uh, still right on the river. Now, we've got a lot to do. Uh, it was apparent that we were making some progress at, from the windows of the helicopter as we are building this big uh, feeder canal as it will go into a reservoir area known as C-44. And the 9,000 acres that you all have already acquired for uh, water uh, storage area and water treatment, storm water treatment is what you call it. And what was amazing was that that's just to treat the water to get the pollution out of it that's occurring from the stormwater. And the stormwater being primarily from the ag agricultural interest on the northeast side of the lake that would drain there. As a matter of fact, in normal times, when you're not dumping water out of the lake, two-thirds of the water coming in to the C-44 canal, which goes into the St. Lucie, two-thirds of that water is coming from stormwater runoff. Then, the fractions are reversed. When you start dumping water out of the lake, as is the case now, because of the level of the lake getting up close to 16 feet, that starts putting the additional pressure on the dike that now they're worried of rupture of the dike and they've already seen some seepage through the dike. And so they've got to dump water. And so what happens to those percentages is it gets reversed. Two thirds of the water in the canal going into the St. Lucie, in fact, is coming out of the lake and the remainder from the storm water. We have a multiplicity of problems. This lagoon starts north at the headwaters, which are at the northern reach of the Kennedy Space Center and it goes all the way south to Hope Sound. The deaths of the dolphins and the manatees and pelicans is accentuated in the northern part of the river. The obvious pollution contributed to by what we just uh, described is quite apparent here, and as we flew on out into the Atlantic, you could actually see the line from the polluted water and the ocean water, or in some of the eddies around the jetty rocks, you could see the clean uh, ocean water, and you could see how it was separated from the brown looking 
uh, polluted water that had come out of the inlet. And that went probably five miles to the south. And from the air, it was very clear that there was a distinct line where the polluted water stopped and the clear ocean water started. Of course, you've got a number of reef, reefs off there. Reefs off of uh, Jupiter Island, reefs off of Hutchinson Island, and we have to be concerned about that kind of pollution as well. Having grown up on the Indian River, I'm accustomed to seeing mullet jump, ospreys dive, porpoises roll, and during the winter, seeing the eagles waiting for the ospreys to catch their dip. And of course, there's none of that out there 